Good afternoon. My name is Eitayo Mwenyani, and this afternoon I will be taking you on the topic that we have titled Five Creative Ways to Protect Your Status, Your Founder Status in Business. This is brought to you by No Accent, and I've been assigned to anchor this session. So let's just go straight to the point now. Uh, this session is going to be helping as many founders that are out there. So if you're a founder or you have this idea that you are still playing around with and hoping that it's going to become something big someday, then I can bet that this session is meant for you. So my intention will be to guide you on those things you can do, legally speaking, and things you can put in place to ensure that your status as a founder is protected. Bear in mind, a lot of founders have been boxed out of their business. I mean, this happens everywhere. And I'm sure that uh, not just about the emotional attachment now, you don't want to be boxed out of your business. So how do you ensure that um, you protect yourself. I have something to try to explain, to analyze what we are really here to achieve today. So look at this, for instance. Now, this is a very beautiful one, really. Now, look at this white stone, very small. So let's assume the first of it, let's assume that this is uh, your business and this is you. Now, you can enter your business. Unfortunately, your business cannot enter you. Now, what this means is that the business is too big for you. But on the other hand, if we imagine that um, this is you and this is your business, that means that you have almost swallowed up your business and uh, your business is actually too small for you. Uh, I'm not unaware of the fact that many people uh, say things like, well, as much as possible, there is a need for the business to be different from the founder and all of that. My intention is not to say that the founder must be the business, neither do I intend to say the business actually must be in the founder. My intention is to explain to you as a founder that there must be a balance, there must be a synergy in such a way that the business is able to enter into you and you are able to enter into your business. Now, until you, you achieve that balance, then there may be a problem somewhere. So the intention in this session is actually to help you to achieve that balance. So are you ready for this? Now let's move to uh, the point one that I am going to be sharing with you. The first hack, the first point you should know is that um, you may wish to register some of your company's intellectual properties in your name. Usually as founders, uh, you really find that you know sometimes some of these intellectual properties we really are the brain work of the founder, but the founder actually would now want to give it to the company because the founder is operating through the company. But this strategy, in essence, is saying, look, be the owner of the intellectual property and own it first then give it to the company. And how do you achieve this? You do this by way of licensing to the company. So that way, you have a stake that you are holding on to. Interestingly, every business, every form of brand has one form of intellectual property or the other. I mean, uh, are you talking about the name of the company or even the logo, the, the, the logo, the company logo, or some recipes or some things, there's usually something that is to be protected. And you as a founder, 
You can do well by ensuring that you get value for these things by being the owner, own it first, and then license it back to the company. Now, in doing all of these things, strategically, you have placed yourself in the business and the business inside of you. So that way, uh, you have some form of returns and it's not easy to be boxed out of the brand that you started. In Nigeria, because we know that um, we are being watched across the globe. Now, in Nigeria in particular, the law of the country when it comes to intellectual uh, property, especially as it has to do with uh, literary work, musical work, or artistic work. Now, this is minus photography. In Nigeria, the interesting thing is that if you are registering as an individual, you you have the opportunity of having the license to you in your lifetime and 70 more years after life but when it comes to a company if a company is owning then that work would only uh, I mean, be the, the company would have 70 years of exclusive ownership so you look at this strategically too it's something that you may actually want to explore and I hope you find that point interesting. So without wasting your time, let's move to the second point. Now, the second point I have here is for you to own majority shares of the business. This is something that um, I would say that many people know. But the challenge is that not many people know how to do this strategically. I'll tell you for free, for instance, that... Um, in our years of helping investors to uh, structure good deals with founders and companies, we found one big problem which has to do with valuation and ensuring that the founder actually has earned what he or she is requesting or claiming to own within the business. So. It would not come like a magic wand that you have majority stake. No investor, no, I mean, uh, a professional investor will not just invest in your business because you have majority stake. You must be able to justify it. And so, what is the hack in this situation? What is the way forward? The way forward is pretty simple. You do not have to own everything at once. So, let's say, for instance, in Nigeria, uh, the minimum share uh, unit or the minimum shares that you can register as a company is a thousand shares. And under that, if you say you want to own majority, that means you're owning 51% at least, or maybe about 50.5 or something, you understand? Now, in owning this uh, majority stake, you could start, for instance, by having a portion of that stake vested in you and having a portion preserved for you to invest over time. So you need to demonstrate hard work. You need to be out there doing the business and taking records of your labor, which will be the basis of the shares that will be invested over time. So in summary, what we are proposing is that if you want to own majority shares, you do not necessarily have to own it immediately. You can own a majority, I mean, you can own some portions already vested in you. I mean, you have access to it. And then another portion to be vested in you over a period of time, spread within which you can labor for it to earn the remaining portion. So that's how to structure it. And you know, that way, Investors would respect you, particularly when you have your records. When you have your records all spelled out and all of that. Yes, investors would um, uh, respect you for those things. And, you know, you will feel good as well. Now, it's very important you appreciate something. This is, uh, it, 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 that suggestion we are making is a pretty good one because the concept of non-voting shares is alien in Nigeria. So every share is supposed to be a voting share and assuming that you can have non-voting shares as it is in some other countries, well, you could say that you, your own shares has a voting right and uh, by reason of that, 
it has more weight compared to some people that have the more shares, uh, I mean the most shares, but they do not have a voting right. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, every share must have voting rights. And that's why this information is coming handy, particularly if you are a founder dealing within the Nigerian space. I believe that um, you know you would find this very interesting. And finally, on this second point, you must also be very careful how you structure your vesting. The vesting clause, you need to get a lawyer. You need to get somebody that will guide you on how to structure these things uh, because it has to be handled with caution, with care. So, say, I mean, uh, give this example. What happens if maybe before the shares got fully vested, some things happened? How do you protect your stake at that? Now, these are things that you need to guide yourself on uh, and then you can seek further legal advice for, from a professional or a business advisory uh, lawyer out there. So I would encourage you to do something like that. So without wasting uh, time, I want us to move to the next uh, point that I have here. Now, the next point, which is the third hack, is for you to have founders' privileges. What do we mean by founders' privileges? Privileges in the sense of privileges means you have a benefit, but it doesn't come as a, as a matter of right. So that means that most times privileges are a contractual thing. And that means that for you to have privileges, there has to be something like a shareholder's agreement that protects you. So you can't have privilege and make it a customary thing. No, it doesn't work that way. You must have a form of shareholders agreement that covers your interest and safeguards your interest. So founders privileges could include maybe you cannot be voted out or there are some conditions to be met before voting out. It could include the fact that your shares cannot be diluted at all or there are conditions to be met before shares can be diluted. It could include that you have a right to appoint a designate director. I mean, a whole lot of privileges that you can actually explore. You need to also seek counsel in this wise. But let me tell you something. A privilege cannot be explored without you first understanding the laws applicable within the country where you are setting up your business. So it's pretty important that you understand the laws of the country, how, how it operates. Now, I said earlier on, I talked about the fact that in Nigeria, uh, we do not have anything, nothing uh, called non-voting shares. It's alien in Nigeria. And in many other countries, you will find different things that are alien. You'll find things that are acceptable and all of that. So you still need to... Uh, you know, engage a consultant, engage a lawyer, engage a business advisory person to guide you on the points that can form your privileges as, uh, as a founder in a business. Uh, I want to move to the fourth point and then we'll wrap it up on the fifth. Now, the fourth is for you to do valuation of your contribution in the business. It's quite uh, I mean, it's quite bad and that there are a whole lot of entrepreneurs, many founders that set out to do business without even doing some form of valuation and without also, it's not just about valuing your business, it's not even about valuing your idea, it's about valuing your input to the business. But we have a lot of founders that do not do this. Many founders resume at work 9 to 5 p.m. Uh, they labor with their private money. They get some support from third parties uh, to push the business. During the very, very dry time of the business, they do not take note of all of these things. And by the time the business starts showing the potential of, for growth, and the investors start coming in. You find a lot of these founders beginning to, you know, insist that no, uh, this is what they feel is the value of their business, this and that. But the journey will be easier if you start now by taking note of your inputs, 
the journey will be easier if you even value your time and you take note of the salary that you are not earning at the moment. Remember we talked about vesting of shares and all of that, keeping part to be vested over time. So yes, a lot of businesses that start, founders start without having uh, I mean, good allowance or even salary. They may have allowances, but they start by sowing seeds. And when they are during the same time, they do not keep records of all of these things. So to protect your interest, it's very important that you place some level of valuation on your inputs, your time, and your contributions to the business. Very important. And you should ensure that you uh, do the needful in, uh, uh, in protecting yourself at that. The final hack I'll be giving, uh, I'll be sharing this afternoon, is for you to prepare for life after you. Many entrepreneurs won't face this fact. I would usually tell entrepreneurs when I have the opportunity to sit with them that look, life is not for life. And it's time we uh, understood that fact that life is not for life. So, uh, as early as possible, you may explore the uh, opportunity of putting structure in place so that it's not just about you being in the business. There is something in place for life after you. How do you get to do this? At least there are two options. At least, at least. The first is you could have a structure that allows you to mill your everything in the business, which includes maybe your rights, your benefits, your uh, privileges, and all of that, subject to the law of the country in question. Now, the other thing you can actually do is to be a joint owner of your stake in the business. So, you can start putting uh, things together. Now, today is not meant for, it's not a session for structuring, otherwise, I'd love to take you through uh, how to structure your brand in such a way that all of these things are covered up. Hopefully, we could still have a session for that. So, you can look forward to that. And if you're there watching us, whether live or later, yes, you can make a request for this uh, through the comment box. And if you have any questions, so please feel free to engage us. We would always respond to your questions. So, you can... Uh, prepare for life after life by having some privileges extended to your choice beneficiary. So all of these things can actually be covered in the uh, whether it's the shareholders agreement for the company or uh, whatever kind of document that is being put together. All of these things can be documented in the company document that binds the company and uh, with these hacks, I'm sure that you will do well. So what we've successfully done is to itemize five different hacks that would guarantee your protection as a founder of your business. Now, I've emphasized as well that some of these hacks are also bound by the laws of the territory where your business is. I've also mentioned that uh, you're protected by ensuring that these rights, these entitlements uh, are well spelled out in a form of documents. And I've also engaged you and encouraged you to seek further counsel as what we have tried to do uh, is a form of opinion though, which we believe uh, and know that is fantastic and will work for you. But it's always very important that you also follow it up with further advice from professionals out there. Uh, in conclusion, it's pretty important that uh, you know that um, you see your greatest leverage that you can leverage on any time, anywhere, is your hard work. Your greatest leverage is your hard work. And we've seen many founders come and go, and what separates them is that, is that hard work and passion they brought to the business. So your business is going to grow 
business is going to sort I mean, not just survive now, it's going to blow up, but you must also ensure that you're bringing on board skills, hard work, and you're leveraging on information, like the kind of information that we share at Law and Sense. So, in conclusion, I will just tell you again, five creative ways to protect your founder status in your business. The number one we've mentioned is um, you, the, your business should be find a way to ensure that your business is in you and you are in your business so that um, you are not just boxed out. We've also mentioned that you can register intellectual properties in your name and be licensed back to your company. We've also talked about um, owning majority shares in the company. We've also talked about having founders' privileges. We've also talked about doing company valuation. And finally, we also encourage that you should prepare for life after life by putting structures in place that caters for your loved ones. We will be on standby to get your questions. And I hope that you had fun listening to me today. Once again, my name is Erika Ogmeri. I'm a member of the Law Accent team. We are into business advisory and we do court litigation and we are SME centric. What we are doing today is our core social value and it's our sales now. Thank you for listening to me. You have a wonderful afternoon.